I'm going to give you 10 prophecies of Jesus, proof that Jesus is Messiah out of the Old Testament. I'm going to give you 10 prophecies from the Old Testament that prove that Jesus is the Messiah. Now, these are fascinating. Nearly 800 years before Christ, the prophet Isaiah spoke, and this is what he said. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, which is God with us. That's Isaiah 7, 14. So Isaiah said the Messiah would come through a virgin, and his name would be called God with us. Quite the prophecy. Then again, uh, in Isaiah 9, 6, and 7, we read this. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called. Now, this is the child that's going to be born, virgin birth, a son given by God, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So Jesus is going to be called the mighty God, the everlasting Father. Great prophecy. And then there's a prophecy that Jesus would be betrayed for 30 pieces of silver, just as it happened. Listen to this, Zechariah 11, 12, and 13. And I said unto them, if you think good, give me my price. If not, forbear. In other words, I, I'd like some money, but I'd do it without the money. So they weighed for my price 30 pieces of silver. And the Lord said unto me, cast it into the potter, a goodly price that I was prized at of them. So that's God saying, that's the price they placed on me, 30 pieces of silver. And I took the 30 pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of the Lord. Now that's a complex prophecy. You see, the potter owned a plot of land where Judas ended up killing himself. So the priest, after, the, after Judas cast the money down in the house of the Lord, it was blood money. They couldn't pick it up. So they called the potter in, said, we'll buy your field where Judas' body is lying. Just pick the money up off the floor. We can't touch it. So the potter picked the money up off the floor in the house of the Lord. Isn't that an amazing prophecy? Now, here's one that took place about a thousand years before Christ in Psalm twenty-two, sixteen and following. David said, they pierced my hands and my feet. That's how Jesus would die. And that was stated before crucifixion existed as a form of capital punishment. I may tell, that means count all my bones. They look and stare upon me. That's because he was naked. They part my garments among them. In other words, they tore it. If you read Matthew chapter 22, verse 18, they tore his garment into four parts and divided it between the four soldiers. And then it says, they cast lots upon my vesture. His vesture was woven and could not be torn into parts. So they gambled for it. That's recorded there in Matthew, fulfilled prophecy. And then Zechariah, about 550 years before Christ, added to the narrative by describing the wounds of his crucifixion. And one shall say unto him, what are these wounds in thine hands? And then he shall answer, those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. So Jesus was wounded in the house of his friends, his hands would be pierced. And, and Isaiah even predicted that they would whip him on the back and pull out his beard, spit in his face, and that he voluntarily accept that. It says, Isaiah 50, verse 6, I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that pulled off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. You can read about that in the book of Matthew, the other gospels as well, that they smote him on the back. They hit him on the cheek. They pulled the beard hair out and they spit in his face, mocking him 550 years earlier. No, that was 800 years earlier, Isaiah. And then Micah said this, they shall smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek. 
Matthew 26, 67 and 27, 30, you can read that. Here's another one from Isaiah 53, 5 and 6. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. The Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all, Isaiah 53, 5 and 6. So there's a prophecy that Christ would be wounded and bruised, but it would be on behalf of others. He would die for others to pay for their sin. Now, there's one more unique prophecy I want to read to you in Micah chapter 5, verse 2, this amazing prophecy. It tells exactly the town Jesus would be born in. And another prophecy, won't go into it, tells you the time he would come. So he says, but thou Bethlehem Ephrata, the two Bethlehems, he tells you which one, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come forth unto me he that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from old, from everlasting. So Bethlehem of Judea is where Messiah will be born. Now, all the Jews knew that because when the wise men showed up and said, where's this Messiah born? They readily answered, well, in Bethlehem of Judea, because the prophets say so. So that's just uh, maybe 10 or 12 prophecies out of 250 that are found in the New Testament. About 50 of them fulfilled the very day of his crucifixion. Now, if you doubt this, let me tell you the book of Isaiah you say, well, maybe those prophecies were written later. The book of Isaiah was found in the Dead Sea Scrolls, dated up to 250 years before Christ. 19 copies of it. One of them was written in copper, etched into the copper, and is available to be seen in Israel today. So that prophecy we know existed, pre preexisted Christ by about 280 years so there you have it. That's just a few of 250 prophecies. You need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ because he is God and he did come and he did die for your sin. All right, I got to get back to work.